to start by asking you all a question. How does food make you feel? And when I say feel, I don't just mean physically, but emotionally. Do some foods make you happy? Perhaps some foods not make you so happy. Maybe there's a food that helps you work harder or improves your attention span. I want you to imagine that you've woken up in the morning and you've got out of bed, you've put the coffee on and you're going to make yourself something for breakfast. Now for me, it can be something as simple as a nice bit of toast covered in butter um, with a soft boiled egg on top and a cup of tea. And when I eat this breakfast and leave the house, I feel satisfied, energised and ready to start the day. Now I want you to think about the alternative. Maybe you've woken up and there's nothing in the house, so you, you leave on an empty stomach. Or maybe it's lunchtime and you're on the go and you grab a supermarket sandwich or a packet of crisps or something that doesn't really fill you up. Or maybe the opposite, maybe you eat something really heavy for lunch and you've got to go and sit at your desk after and get on with work. How does that make you feel? What I'm trying to say here is that food is a really powerful tool. It can set the course for our whole day. It can make us feel sluggish and tired, or it can build us up, energise us and give us fuel. It can affect our attention span. It can affect our mood. It can even affect our relationships. And I know I'm a much better person to be around when I've had a decent meal. Now I want to ask you the same question. How does food make you feel? But this time I want you to imagine that you're in prison. Now, if you're in prison right now in 2018, you might be in your cell for anywhere up to 23 hours a day. Your exercise and fresh air is limited to a certain period of time in a small yard. I don't need to tell you that prison can be a really intense environment. There's violence and disruption and danger pretty much 24-7. If you are in prison now in 2018, you are more likely to have a mental health problem than not to have one. You may have lived a chaotic life before prison. You're more likely to have been in care, to have been a victim of sexual abuse, or to come from a deprived background where something like healthy eating just never factored in. Right now, sat in your cell, you may have a very long sentence ahead of you. Now, considering all of this, something like food to you and I might seem really insignificant in an environment like prison. However, it's actually a really big deal. Now, these are the questions that I asked myself a year or so ago when I launched Food Behind Bars, um, which is my national campaign to improve prison food in the UK. Um, before I launched my campaign, I'd never been to a prison. I'd never met a prisoner, and everything I knew about the subject was based on what I'd seen on TV or read in newspapers. Um, my background's actually in the fashion industry and in journalism. And it was the journalist in me that brought me to the subject in late 2016. So I was on my laptop doing some research, browsing, not really doing anything, and I came across an official report that was called Life in Prison, Food. Now, the report was assessing food quality across prisons in the UK, and it highlighted a huge amount of issues. The general conclusion was that food standards in prison had been on a steady decline. Inspectors noted that there weren't enough fresh fruit and vegetables, there were way too many carbohydrates, Portion sizes were small, breakfast was inadequate, there was no communal dining, and variety was quite limited. For me, the most interesting part about the whole report is that they were linking a drop in food standards to a drop in prison standards, basically implying that poor nutrition was having an impact on everything from um, mental health to um, disruptive behaviour um, and high reoffending rates. And it was all summed up in this one sentence. Prisoners eating well is not just a matter of prisoner well-being, but is of practical and financial concern to the prison service. Now, I became pretty fired up about the subject quite quickly. Um, I pitched the idea of an article based around what prisoners ate to an editor, um, wrote the article, and had a really good response after it was published. And um, after it was published, I felt like I wasn't quite done with the subject and that there was more to say, and, and more importantly, no one was actually talking about it. Um, so I launched a campaign. Now, prison is a really closed off world. Pretty much the only people who know what's going on are inside it. And my first thought when I launched the campaign was, I need to speak to as many people as possible who are eating this food or have eaten it. 
And in the last year or so, I've spent a lot of time in prisons, talking to inmates, talking to ex-inmates, and spending time with the people who are actually cooking the food. And there's been a couple of ex-prisoners along the way um, who've really influenced me and pushed my campaign forward. And I thought I'd share a couple of stories with you. Um, the first one is Sophie. So Sophie was the first person I spoke to when I launched my campaign. Um, she spent three years in prison. And since she's come out, she avoids processed food. Um, she even has an allotment where she cooks vegetables, uh, sorry, grows vegetables, her and her family. Um, and this is what she had to say. You know when you have a weekend off and eat pizzas and drink beer and you feel like crap? Imagine feeling that way for three years and it being completely out of your control. Now, Sophie reckons she put on about five stone in prison. She had to take laxatives every day to help her pass the food. Um, and she had quite a few friends in Orange is the New Black style who actually changed religion um, in the hope that it would get them better food. During my last year when I was on home leave, I remember leaving prison and the first thing I did was pop into Morrison's and buy a shitload of salad and chicken breast. I made myself a little salad and ate it on the train home. Even now, I absolutely love salad because I just didn't have it in prison. Now, the second person is Tim. Um, I sat on the phone to Tim for what felt like hours, and he told me about his 16 years in prison. And Tim described the poor quality of food as soul-destroying. It grinds you down, he said. He also said this. The menu revolves around four weeks. What tends to happen is you pick something that's vaguely edible, and you just eat the same thing every time. In the long term, the poor quality, small portion, and lack of variety becomes a real chore. Now, Tim was convinced that um, improving prisoner diet would actually improve life in prison. And he thought that a better diet was crucial if prisoners wanted to go on and lead better lives. Many of us, myself included, went into prison with a very unhealthy lifestyle. I was a drug user, he said. But there comes a point when you want to evolve as a person. So as you get healthier and you want to change your life, food is one thing that's very difficult to change. Now, you may all be thinking the same thing at this point, um, which is, why should you care? Uh, these people are prisoners, they're criminals. Um, why should you care if they eat well or not? Um, and you're probably wondering as well why I care, uh, which is a very valid question. Um, well, I'm a big believer in the power of food, uh, not just for our bodies, but for our minds as well. And for me, a decent meal can mean the difference between a good day and a bad day. And over the years, it's been statistically proven that eating a healthier diet can impact every single area of our lives, from improving our lifespan to preventing depression um, and making us better workers and learners. So I found it really strange that here's an environment home to some of society's most vulnerable and mentally unstable people, and yet their diet was not being used as a tool that could help improve this and improve prison life. And this would be all well and good if the prison system was working in the way that it should. Uh, however, in modern history, things have arguably never been so bad. And here's some statistics to prove that. Last year, 344 people died in prison, and this is the highest number since records began. Assaults on staff in prison have risen over 88% in the last two years. 44% of adults are reconvicted within one year of leaving prison and rates of self-harm are at the highest level ever recorded. Now, to contradict all of this, since 2010, the prison service has suffered a budget cut of 40%, and this is the biggest budget cut across all public services. And prison food budget has also suffered as a result of this. Um, not so long ago, the spending per head per day in prison was around £2.2p. 2 um, and what's happened is that when a service is trying to make budget cuts, um, some things suffer. So now what happens is um, prisons have the autonomy to pick their own food budgets. And I've witnessed instances where it's as low as £1.80, £1.84, and that's for three meals a day. Now, society has undergone a massive food revolution in the last few decades. Um, every day we're bombarded with um, messages of healthy food and this diet can make you live longer be happier and have more successful relationships. However, when it comes to prison, this concept has been completely forgotten. And to understand this a little more clearly, I need you to flash back 
13 years ago um, to this picture. Um, you might recognize it, but um, it's from a TV program called Jamie's School Dinners. And this was aired 13 years ago on Channel 4. And Jamie's School Dinners was, was much more than just a TV program. Um, it was a huge movement to improve school food in the UK. And Jamie Oliver decided that as a country, um, we were feeding our school children rubbish. And he was right. Um, he went into a South London secondary school and found that no fresh food was being prepared. Instead, there were chicken nuggets, pizzas, burgers, turkey twizzlers, stuff a bit like this. Um, and Jamie was convinced that there was a direct link between the way children were behaving in the classroom and what they were eating in the canteen. And once again, he was right. Jamie's school dinners has generally been seen as a huge success. Um, since the revolution in school food, children are achieving better test results and taking less days off sick. Kids are generally calmer and therefore more able to learn. And crucially, improving the way that children eat in school has actually helped improve their lives outside of school. So by giving them better food in school, it actually means that when they leave the school, school gates, sorry, or when they end up leaving home eventually, they've got more of a chance of achieving a better quality of life, of living a longer, healthier life, and succeeding in work and education. Now, once again, you may all be thinking the same thing, which is, um, it's a no-brainer that our children should be eating well. They are the future of tomorrow. They deserve the best start in life. And crucially, they are young, innocent people. Now, innocence isn't really a word that you'd usually associate with prison. The people inside prison have committed crimes, often terrible crimes, hurting others and making poor decisions. Why do they deserve to eat well? Now, if you're thinking this, then you're not alone. Um, there are a lot of people in this country who don't think that prisoners should eat well or be treated well, for that matter. Um, and I found this out when I went on the BBC to debate the subject live with MPs. Um, this was a really positive experience, and I got a huge amount of support. However, inevitably, there were a lot of people who didn't agree with what I was saying. And I found this out when I went through some of the social media comments after. But to better understand the way that this country sees prison and prisoners, not everyone, but a lot of people, um, I thought I'd read you some of the comments. If you don't like the food, don't commit the crimes. I thought prison was supposed to be punishment. Suggestions, bread, water, cold soup, raw apple, milk. They are in there for punishment, not enjoyment. If they don't offend, they can stay at home and enjoy healthy meals. If it was me, they would get bread, water, and gruel and live in a cell with no luxury items. I'm old school like that. If the food is so dreadful, why do so many of them return time after time? It's not supposed to be carriages. Maybe if they were hungrier, they would have time to shout and scream. Now, when I get these kind of comments, um, I completely understand where they're coming from. Um, it's a really controversial subject. However, all that I'm trying to do and, and all I want to do with my campaign is to raise awareness and to get people to see the bigger picture. Um, as a country, we have the highest reoffending rates in Europe. Almost half the people that are leaving prison are ending up back in there within a year. Huge budget cuts have meant that people are leaving prison in a worse state than when they entered. And for me, it really begs the question, what is prison actually for? If we want it to work properly, it should be a tool to rehabilitate these people, to make sure that when they're being released, they're not going on and making the same choices and mistakes again. What it shouldn't be is a human warehouse where we store people, feed them bread and water, um, release them into society, and expect them to magically go on and lead healthy, law-abiding lives. And it's the prison service's job to rehabilitate these people. Now, I don't know anything that influences our health, um, um, sorry, influences that can change rehabilitation more than our health and well-being. Um, I want to read you a quote, and it's by a Russian philosopher and an author. I can't pronounce his name, but the quote's really good. It says, we can judge the level of civilization in a society by the way it treats its prisoners. Um, and I think this quote still stands up today. If we want to live in a civilised society where our homes and our families and our possessions are as safe as possible, we need to look to our prisons. 
The way that prison runs has a direct impact on all of our lives, whether we're aware of it or not. And, um, and eventually, these people are going to be released back into our neighbourhoods, and we would all benefit from them making a positive contribution to society and not a negative. Now, we can't expect people to go on and lead successful lives if we don't feed them well and educate people about food. And we certainly can't expect people to go on and turn their lives around if we don't feed them well and educate them about food. Um, now, you only have to turn on the news to see that our prison system is in crisis. And hopefully that will lead to a complete reform in the way that we run prisons in our country. And my aim with Food Behind Bars is to make sure that when this happens, food is not just part of it, but is integral to it. Thank you very much.